Hello, my name is Laurie and today I'm going to be learning you all about Shetland's coastal landscape. So we're going to be looking at um, spits and bars, arches, stacks, vos, gyos, you name it. We're going to have um, a really nice trip up north and we're going to look at some of the features of the coastal landscape along the way. And um, so my name's Laurie, I said that at the start, and my job is um, as a tour guide so I talk people around Shetland and tell them all about the history, the culture and the landscape and what they're seeing and try and help them understand how Shetland is the way it is today. So Shetland is a group of islands, we're made up of over a hundred islands, 16 of them are inhabited so 16 of them have got people living on them and um, over millions of years we have moved to a position that was just south of the equator so we were in the tropics millions of years ago and we've moved north to where we sit today which is at 60 degrees north and we're um, about 200 miles away from Scotland 200 miles away from Norway so we kind of sit in the centre of the North Atlantic we have the North Atlantic on the west and we have the North Sea on the east and today we're going to look at some of the North Atlantic coastline because it's far more dramatic. Um, we've got a much more powerful seas that kind of eat away at the, the coast on the west side because it's such a huge expanse. There's nothing between here and North America. So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So I hope you really enjoy it. And if you get the opportunity, if you've um, got access to a car or somebody that can drive you, get your parents or your grandparents to take you for a trip up north and see if you can see some of the things that we've been looking at today. Okay, so what we're looking at here is uh, spits and bars and these are features that we find commonly in Shetland. So we have two of them here. So spits and bars are formed when sand and silt that's been deposited into the sea is washed back up and it forms these kind of protrusions out into the water. And what's happened here in Shetland is that since the last ice age 10,000 years ago, um, Shetland has slowly been sinking. And that's happening really, really slowly. We would never notice it. But the reason it's happening is because Norway and Scotland are both rising because the weight of the ice has been removed because the ice has melted and so what that's doing is that's kind of pulling Shetland under so at one time down here where we have the Vaux um, and the same as Vaux all are in Shetland at one time this would have been a valley so it would have been a valley floor but because we're slowly slowly sinking um, it's flooded so it's become a flooded valley which we can't avoid and there was a lot more silt and sediment in the water which washes up. Okay so we're up in Orofirth now so we're right up north and what we're looking at is we're looking at where um, a spit or a bar has uh, completely cut off a piece of water. So what we've got is the sea on the left and then on the right we've got kind of a silty kind of, uh, it'll be, there'll be quite a lot of sat in among it so it's like, a, but it is fresh water so it's a fresh water lagoon um, but it will be quite satty. Another really good place to see an example of this is if you've been um, at the Spiggy Loch. So Spiggy Loch at one time was a vaux that reached right inland so it was quite a deep vaux but over the years again since the last ice age it's kind of built up the beach there so we have the beach which goes the whole way across and it's completely cut off um, the Spiggy Loch for the sea so what once was a vaux um, and it was part of the sea is now freshwater loch. So that's um, Orofirth and another example is of course at Spiggy. Okay so what we're looking at here is what we call the drongs and they're basically just uh, a few sea stacks and the way that these have formed is and the way that all sea stacks form is basically you have hard rock and you have a softer rock and over the years, millions of years, 
this process tax. Our millions of years the sea erodes or it eats away at the softer rock and what's left is the hard rock and that is the the sea stack that we see so that's a harder piece of rock and all the soft rock around it has been eaten away by the sea over millions and millions of years and today is quite a nice example the sea is quite um, active today it's quite a rough day and so the action of the waves is constantly chipping away at the coastline it's constantly changing it and that's why Shetland's coastline is ever changing and it's why it's so dramatic is all the different types of rocks all the different types of geology the hard rocks the soft rocks all coming together and being constantly changed by the sea so that's what we've got here with the drongs that we're looking at there on the horizon in the background there just on the horizon and um, that three kind of some people say they look like dragon's teeth coming out the, the water and there's a few more stacks just there on the headland there that's called the heads of Grocken and then a bit closer to the shore we have the beach there which runs all the way across and I hint it we have um, another kind of silty lagoon and just a fun fact here for you, uh, apparently in that lagoon it was drained around about 1900, so over 100 years ago the farmer drained it and apparently he said that there was a Viking longship at the bottom of it. Um, there have been people that have gone in with diving suits to try and fin it but apparently they couldn't have fin it, it was really kind of grown out with lots of weeds growing in the bottom in there but apparently there's a Viking ship in there. So that's just some really nice examples of sea stacks. We've got the bar across there and just lots of stacks. Right, now we're looking at the door home and some folks say it looks like an elephant taking a drink of water. Other folks say a horse, some people say a dinosaur. But it, whatever, it looks like an animal that's taking a drink and it's got that big arch in the middle. So again, same as what we spoke about with the sea stacks that is just our millions millions of years um, the sea has found a weak point in the rock and it's gotten in and it's just worn away all that kind of softer rock and it's created that big natural arch and we see natural arches all around the coastline here now at some point it might be next week it might be in a million years but the middle of that arch will collapse and then we will be left with, on the, the right will be left with a nice sea stack. So that's another way that sea stacks can be formed. It's when that kind of central bit of the arch collapses, then we'd be left with two sea stacks, kind of similar to what we have with the drongs. So that's the door home. Right, so we're getting farther north and we're nearly at Aishness. And when we get to Aishness, we'll kind of find out that um, Aishness was as, as a section through a volcano. Now every volcano has got a vent which drives the lava um, into the, the main chamber of the volcano and what we're looking at just out there on the horizon that pretty island out there that small island that is called Mokolosa and that is thought to be one of the vents that fed the main chamber of the Aishness volcano. So that is a volcano vent that we're looking at there and a, and a pretty sheep in the foreground. So we're going to go all the way up to Aishness now and find out a pretty bit more about the coastal landscape there and the Aishness volcano. Okay, we're up at Aishness now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get out the car and I'm going to take you to Caldorsko and the reason that I'm doing the video here in the car is because you'll never hear me speaking because it's really really windy. So I'm going to show you Caldorsko and Caldorsko is really interesting because it's um, a kind of uh, like an inlet which is a gyo and it's been formed by a sea cave which has collapsed and in Shetland we have so many sea caves and here in Caldorsko we have 
the biggest sea cave in Britain. Uh, divers recently, or a couple of years ago, divers came in with some equipment and they measured the chambers of the sea cave and they discovered that it's the biggest sea cave in Britain. So that's amazing that Shetland's got the biggest sea cave. So Calder's Girl was formed because um, it was a sea cave and again caves are formed the same way the sea gets in it kind of exploits a weakness in the rock and after a while it becomes a cave um, but eventually the roof of the cave here at Calder's Gyo collapsed and so that's why we have such a long narrow gyo is because the roof of that one time cave has collapsed in. and if you keep going um, up here at Aishness if you walk maybe I don't know, quarter of a mile, you'll come to a place called the Halls of Scrada. And the Halls of Scrada are again, um, it's like two big halls right inland for the sea. And again, that's just where the roof of the sea cave has collapsed. So come up to Aishness, have a walk around, be really careful, don't go too close to the edge, and just make sure you've got an adult. So this is the Halls of Scrada, which is now just one big hall because the remaining part of the roof collapsed sometime in the late 19th century. and it's really really windy so you'll never hear me speak um, so Aishness is a series of spectacular cliffs up here in Shetland and they were formed about 360 million years ago when Shetland lay down near the tropics and we were part of a kind of chain of volcanoes and Aishness was a, a volcano we've seen the vent already and so if you're up here at Aishness and you have a look at the cliffs, you'll be able to see the different kind of lava flows within them. So all these different layers of like lava and um, volcanic rock are marking up the landscape here. So it's quite an unforgiving landscape, but a very beautiful one. And if you get a chance, then do come up to Aishness, but really be careful near the edge, okay? <laughs> everything um, from me for today and I really hope that you've enjoyed my trip north and I hope that you've learned a few things and I hope that the next time you're out for a drive you have a look at the landscape, you have a look at the coastline around us and you can just try and mull it over and think about how some of these features in the coastal landscape have been created and um, it's fascinating so go and enjoy it and it's been lovely bringing you with me on this Sunday morning. So have a good, have a good day and I hope your homeschooling is going really well.